So guys, yesterday we discussed about uh, why people are talking about electric vehicles. And uh, the one line answer is, uh, it's going to be more cheaper, right? Uh, how it's going to be more cheaper? Actually, you see a lot of, uh, like, uh, if you compare a Tata Nexon EV, uh, compared to its petrol, its electric version is uh, almost 80% cost, right? Uh, so, again, why people are talking about electric vehicles? It is going to be much more uh, cheaper when you are going to consider the running cost of it, right? So, it, the rate of electricity, the price of electricity is compared to uh, the price of petrol and diesel is very, very low. And if you, if you consider the per kilometer cost of an EV uh, with reference to a normal uh, petrol or diesel vehicle, it's going to be uh, much more... Uh, lesser. So you can imagine uh, nowadays with a uh, 100 rupees a liter petrol price, right? Maybe 95, uh, 90 to 95 rupees a liter petrol price, uh, where you have, uh, let's say, uh, 5 rupees or 7 rupees a kilometer, right? So, uh, and, and then if you talk about uh, uh, electric vehicle, it's going to be less than. Uh, one rupees or 50 pesa or 30 pesa per kilometer, right? That level of running uh, cost is uh, possible. So it is very efficient and very economical, uh, not in terms of um, running, um, but just in terms, of, not in terms of uh, the capital investment when you are uh, going to buy the vehicle, but the running costs are very, very low, very, very uh, low. So, and, and we discuss also about uh, technology trends and uh, what are the challenges, right? Uh, we also discussed about uh, what is energy flow and overall efficiency. And uh, the important point uh, uh, is uh, how do you start learning about EVs, right? Uh, what is the best way and what is the methodology uh, you should adopt in, in order to start learning about uh, electric vehicles? So we are going to have second day as uh, today, and we will be learning about uh, battery technology for electric vehicles. So uh, what are the types of batteries? And uh, uh, yesterday we talked a lot about uh, EV batteries and EV uh, energies, right? And uh, uh, today we are going to understand about uh, power and energy density of a battery pack. And we are also going to understand uh, what is the role of uh, modeling and simulation in electric vehicle development. And we are also going to learn about uh, kind of uh, what type of uh, 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 software simulation can be used for EV battery pack. Okay, so this is uh, the agenda for today. And uh, I will be taking questions at the regular interval of time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm going to uh, say that uh, you can ask your questions now and then I will be having a look at the chat box. So uh, let's get started for uh, today. So uh, yesterday also I asked this question, um, why EV is new technology, uh, but battery and the motor uh, technology are not actually new technologies, right? So if you if you answer this question, why um, EV is uh, a new technology considered as a new technology, right? Um, when the battery was invented, uh, probably maybe uh, two thousand years ago, right? Uh, there are there are uh, even before the Volta cell, uh, there are people uh, who were doing certain experiments related to battery. When the motor was invented, let's say, for example, 500 years back. So while the battery and the motor are um, not a new technology, why EV is not, EV is just a combination of the motor and the battery, right? So what is the reason why EV is um, not coming up on the roads, right? And we have seen the reasons yesterday, but uh, we are going to see the major reasons for uh, which is related to EV batteries uh, today. So um, in, in fact, the first electric vehicle uh, 
or the first pilot electric vehicle or the first prototype electric vehicle was uh, there on the street, right? Maybe around 100 and 125 years ago, right from now. So people have been trying uh, with a battery operated uh, vehicle since a long time. So it's not about electric vehicle. Uh, we are, uh, um, uh, as a mankind, we are not uh, looking at that option because it's very efficient and very uh, affordable but at the same time we need to understand um, what are the challenges right such that the market penetration is very very low so what is the main reason um, yesterday also we discussed the reason um, the onboard energy right uh, for a battery pack is very very low so i'm ship i'm going to show you something which is very really important uh, if you look at uh, the graph uh, which I'm sharing now. Uh, on the y-axis, you have energy density, uh, which is basically uh, kilowatt hour per liter. And if you consider uh, the specific energy, which is kilowatt hour per kilograms, right? Um, look at the values that petrol and diesel have today, right? So the values petrol and diesel have, and compared to the coal, uh, the lithium-ion batteries, even today, are standing somewhere here right so the amount of energy that we have with lithium-ion batteries is not at all comparable with the petrol and diesel right but let's say you are taking one liter of petrol which is having a uh, let's say around a, a nine kilowatt hour per liter and out of that nine kilowatt hour how much is the energy uh, available to the wheels, right? That is also a question. So let's say the IC engine, uh, the average efficiency is around, for example, uh, 25 percentage, um, right? Then only 25 percentage of this nine kilowatt hour is available on the wheels. And therefore you can consider the mileage of kilometers per liter um, that is very, very low. And if, if you consider the equivalent mileage of uh, kilometers right per kilowatt hour right for lithium ion batteries uh, because it's electric vehicle it is going to be uh, significantly high now there has to be a balance between a very low energy density and very high efficiency okay so here even though the petrol and diesel are on the top right corner uh, their efficiency values are very very low right or, or the engine efficiencies are very very low and over here the engine uh, or I would say the electric powertrain efficiencies are very, very high. Okay. So let's say when you multiply this nine kilowatt hour by this efficiency, and if you multiply uh, this two kilowatt hour uh, by its efficiency, let's say 80 percentage, then this can be comparable, right? Obviously, uh, they are not going to be uh, as equal as one liter of petrol is equal to one liter of uh, uh, battery size. Right, or one liter of uh, lithium ion battery volume, they are not never going to be equal unless and until there is a, a significant chemical um, you know, technology change or, or a, a very steep change in uh, uh, the chemical technology of uh, batteries. Right, so even if you consider wood uh, is uh, having a higher uh, energy density uh, than lithium ion batteries, even if you consider uh, liquid propane, uh, it's having higher energy density, right? So, uh, and people who were talking about hydrogen, uh, probably uh, this is another issue where uh, the amount of energy that is available in the hydrogen or, or if you are talking about a fuel cell vehicle, uh, we need a lot of hydrogen uh, in order to run the vehicle, right? So, the compressed hydrogen uh, is again lower than this, right? So when we talk about uh, petrol, diesel, and uh, hydrogen as a uh, fuel option, the lithium-ion batteries are here. And uh, obviously, the advantage is here in terms of uh, efficiency. So this is a kind of a green uh, line where we, we consider it as a favorable situation. Uh, over here, uh, the efficiency is not much high. OK, so if you take 9 kilowatt hour and if you multiply with uh, 0.25 so 9 times 0.25 um, if i consider 10 uh, to be on higher side for a diesel uh, 
it will be 2.5 kilowatt hour right so let's say uh, with efficiency considered uh, i have got a number after multiplying with the efficiency factor as 2.5 uh, for diesel why the lithium ion batteries can be let's say around 1.5 with uh, 95 percentage uh, as a top efficiency or uh, 80 percentage as, a, as uh, highest efficiency it is going to be around uh, one right or let's say 1.2 right now this 1.2 and 2.5 are not that high difference numbers okay it, it looks like in this graph where the lithium ion batteries are very very low uh, petrol and diesel are at a very higher level of energy containment but if you consider the overall if, uh, energy efficiency this two can be near to each other right and now if you consider uh, this is per liter right so obviously uh, you need a, uh, a lot of volume in order for you to run your vehicle at a higher uh, uh, level so you need to understand how uh, is the efficiency combined effect will be uh, coming up right so probably if you want to run uh, with your vehicle around 100 kilometers uh, you definitely need a lot less number of uh, uh, less amount of diesel in your diesel tank uh, but for the same 100 kilometers you need a large volume of a battery pack right so this is the uh, main reason uh, till today why this was uh, not happening and uh, earlier let's say 10 years back lithium ion batteries were even even very low energy density and low specific energy. And that was the reason why it was not possible. And now um, due to the high volume manufacturing and due to the higher energy density uh, compared to its previous version of lithium ion battery, it is quite possible that uh, these things are uh, now comparable. Okay, And therefore we are uh, uh, having a, um, a hope right, where uh, we can actually electrify uh, the vehicles, right? So this is uh, one of the reasons where we did energy comparison along with uh, efficiency, and uh, uh, the efficiency of electrical system is very high, right? And uh, you need to understand how this together uh, is going to work, how energy density along with efficiency is going to work together for your vehicle application. Okay, so now it is possible right now this number is uh, earlier it was below one uh, now it is between one and two if this value is just going to be let's say around two and between two and three right um, you can see a significant shift uh, towards electric mobility so this is one of the reasons uh, related to battery and i hope you have a clarity on uh, what is the meaning of uh, energy density and uh, so, so what is basically um, energy density and uh, power density, right? So this is about uh, the main reason, and we are going to talk uh, a lot about uh, electric vehicle batteries in this session. So let us go ahead and uh, what is going to happen if we compare, uh, okay, if we compare uh, both efficiency and energy density, right? So it is very much important uh, that we compare uh, them together because efficiency is very high in uh, batteries. Um, the energy density is very low in case of uh, batteries, right? But uh, if we treat them together, we might have a uh, good amount of uh, uh, let, let's say a win-win situation for uh, batteries, even though they have a low energy uh, density. So uh, what here I'm uh, showing you in this image is uh, really important to understand. So we are interested in uh, how much is the amount of energy expenditure for a vehicle to run for 100 kilometers, right? So we are trying to answer this question how much is the amount of energy expenditure for 100 kilometers uh, of a vehicle, right? So let's say uh, this is a vehicle uh, which goes to 100 kilometers like this, 
right? So this is a driving pattern of uh, the vehicle uh, for uh, 100 kilometers, right? And with this driving pattern, uh, we have calculated uh, that the amount of energy required is 11.6 kilowatt hour. Okay, so this is the amount of energy required on wheels, 11.6 kilowatt hours. Now, how this 11.6 kilowatt hour of energy for the distance of 100 kilometer is made available, right? So if you consider the vehicle to be uh, an... Uh, a vehicle which is electric vehicle, right? uh, which is run from electricity, uh, then uh, you are uh, going to have um, consideration from where the electricity is coming, right? And uh, so let's say when you talk about uh, electricity, uh, there will be certain losses in the battery itself, there will be certain losses in the motor itself. And if you consider all the efficiency, uh, you are going to deduct 14, uh, like we are going to add this losses. So 11.6 plus 0.5 plus 2.2 is going to come around 11 point, uh, sorry, 14.3 kilowatt hour of energy. So 14.3 kilowatt hour of um, battery charging power is required, right? Now, 14.3 kilowatt hour of battery charging power can actually be resulted into the coal chemical energy of 40.8 kilowatt hours, right? So look at this raw material to fuel to the wheels, right? And if you, if you do this analysis, right, this is called a well-to-wheel analysis, uh, the electricity uh, which is generated by coal, right, is going to be uh, this much costly in terms of energy expenditure. If you have a solar panel or a wind uh, system, then it is going to be of this much. If you are using a hydro system or if you are using uh, oil right, uh, to generate power in a power plant, then this is going to be the amount of energy uh, which you will be uh, using. right? So this is an, a comparison. So the most cheapest, uh, in, not, not in terms of economic, uh, but in terms of how much you are consuming. right? So how much you are consuming is going to be the most cheapest way that is a green way, uh, which is where you, you produce a power by uh, solar or wind. So when you are going to uh, use solar or wind power, you, you basically uh, need 16.3 kilowatt hour of energy captured from sun or wind in order to drive this vehicle for this kind of a speed uh, pattern for 100 kilometers from uh, the role of a battery, right? So probably if you need a larger range, uh, you need a, a larger battery pack, right? So, so people are uh, uh, talking about a very large battery pack for EVs nowadays. And uh, uh, usually the range uh, starts from uh, uh, anywhere between uh, 200, right? Uh, for, for some of the vehicles, right? To, uh, actually 500 kilometers as well per charge. Right? So electric cars are available in this range where per charge you can actually run for 200 kilometers to uh, 500 and people are trying with even larger battery pack uh, for higher range. Okay, so now imagine uh, what is the customer requirement? Um, how is the pattern of the customer? Uh, now we have a clear idea about uh, what is the role of uh, EV batteries? And as I said, uh, people are looking for larger and larger EV battery pack uh, because uh, they are looking for a uh, larger, uh, like the higher uh, range, like uh, the distance covered per charge, as well as they are looking for, uh, they are also looking for a better battery life, right? So these are the two things which are mainly governing uh, EV battery technology. Now, if you are interested in learning about electric vehicle batteries, uh, what is that uh, thing you need to start learning, right? What is that thing you need to uh, first focus on, right? So you should uh, first uh, focus on the basics, right? So let us get started with uh, battery basics, right? So what are the important terminologies? And uh, 
what is the difference uh, like between a battery and a voltage source, right? So some something uh, like this you need to uh, understand. So can we consider battery as a DC voltage source? Uh, I would like to uh, hear from you guys uh, that uh, what are your thoughts? Okay, can we consider uh, battery as a DC voltage source? Okay, uh, I, I'm getting a mixture uh, of yes and no, and now mostly yes. Okay, a few no. Okay, so what is the difference? Uh, there are similarities and there are differences. Okay, so we can consider uh, them as uh, uh, like a source of uh, uh, DC supply, right, as battery, but it is not equal to that. Okay, so if I ask you about what is the difference between a battery and a battery charger? Okay, a DC voltage source is basically a kind of a power supply, uh, which is a battery charger. So a battery charger uh, is basically going to be connected with a grid. Right. And as long as the grid supply is available, it, it can continue converting AC into DC. Okay, So a DC voltage source is an infinite amount of energy contained into that. In case of a battery, it's going to be a finite amount of uh, stored capacity. So that's the difference between a battery and a DC voltage source. You can do the modeling of a battery assuming an ideal DC voltage source, provided that that DC voltage source is going to become empty once you are going to take all the current out of the battery, right? Uh, and, and the battery voltages are going to reduce while you are discharging. So you can definitely consider battery as a DC voltage source for a finite period of time, okay? For finite level of the voltages. Okay, so this is the difference between um, battery and the DC voltage source. If we talk about uh, the next thing, right, what is the battery capacity or ampere hour? Okay, so can anyone answer this question? What is battery capacity or ampere hour? So I will be looking at uh, uh, the answers in the chat box. So maybe you can uh, explain it very short about uh, what is the capacity of a battery. So Jay is replying that uh, one ampere current flow for one hour, right? If one ampere current is going to flow for one hour, uh, then I can say that my ampere hour capacity is one. Okay, so yes, current supplied by battery in one hour, Yes, energy. Uh, Vinod Kumar, you are right. Uh, energy contained inside the battery, right? Mm. That is the capacity of the battery. Current delivered in one hour. Yes, measure of the chance to correct. So, ampere hour is basically the Coulomb capacity, right? If you are uh, very thorough with the fundamentals, uh, you know about uh, uh, the Q is a capacity in charge or coulombs uh, is basically ampere times second, right? And if you convert seconds into an hour, it's, it's in order to uh, avoid dealing with a large number of coulombs, we, instead of coulombs, we kind of uh, consider it as an ampere hour, okay? And uh, if you are talking about uh, cell phone batteries, sometimes they are milliampere hours uh, as a, uh, standard unit of battery capacity. So battery capacity is the amount of energy contained and one ampere hour means the battery is able to deliver one ampere for one hour without being fully discharged or, or till it is fully discharged. Okay, so that is the meaning of uh, battery capacity. And uh, if we talk about C rate, uh, C rate is again a simple uh, terminology. Uh, if you have a battery capacity of uh, 4 ampere hour, in case of 4 ampere hour battery capacity, uh, if you are discharging at a 4 ampere, right, 
then you are discharging it as a one serial. Now, if you connect a charger, which is 5 volt, 2 ampere, uh, then you are basically charging the 4 ampere hour battery at 0.5 serial, right? So, if your battery capacity is 4 ampere hour, and if you are charging it at 2 ampere, you are charging at 0.5 C rate or C by 2 rate. So this is a uh, C rate uh, definition for uh, batteries. Let us go with the next. What is state of charge? State of charge is the remaining capacity of the battery. It, it indicates uh, how much percentage of the battery uh, capacity is still left compared to the full capacity. Okay. So if you have a 4 ampere hour of battery capacity and if your cell phone is indicating that 50% uh, battery level is still there, uh, it means that you can still have 2 ampere hour of capacity uh, which is yet to be discharged. Right? So the state of charge is basically the remaining capacity of the battery. And if you, you can give a comparison, right? and you can uh, imagine a battery uh, just like a glass of water. And uh, uh, so the water is basically the amount of electrical energy uh, that is inside, right? So the glass is uh, half full or uh, or half or full, right? And basically, uh, it, it means that the battery capacity, when, when we are talking about AH, right? Uh, the second terminology, uh, it, it's what is the size of the glass, okay? Now, when we talk about state of charge, it's basically what is the level of the water, okay? So the level of the water and the uh, highest capacity possible in the glass to be the level of water, they are going to be different. Okay, so state of charge and ampere hour capacity can be compared with a glass of water. So if I want to uh, now um, uh, ask you to calculate something which is uh, uh, related to electric vehicle, right, electric scooter, can you tell me about what is the range of an electric scooter if the scooter is going to take 10 ampere uh, from 48 volt 20 ampere hour battery running at 30 kilometers per hour. So if you have understood correctly what is the meaning of ampere hour, right, uh, you should be able to answer this. Uh, what is the range of electric scooter uh, which is going to take 10 ampere from 48 volt battery uh, at 30 kilometers per hour. Okay, so yes, so Nikhil, Marvino, and uh, Parangi, you guys are correct, uh, 60 kilometers, right? So, how you can actually do this with your scooter? Okay, so let's say if you have a battery electric scooter, what you need is just a uh, clamp on meter, uh, which is going to be uh, able to tell you what is the current taken from the scooter. Okay, so while uh, your friend driving the scooter, you can sit behind and you can uh, apply the clamp on meter just to uh, measure what is the uh, value of current according to the value of speed. Okay, so if, if your uh, value of uh, speed is let's say uh, 20 kilometers per hour, and if your current is uh, somewhere around uh, uh, 5 ampere, right? You can recalculate this and uh, come up with a value of the range, right? So, in order to get the range, right, uh, you can do the simple experiment and uh, you can come up with the answer. So, Sushindran is asking how to measure. So, what you need is a clamp on meter. Uh, so, what is a clamp meter? It's basically an A meter. So, in a laboratory, you might have seen an emitter, which is um, the current measurement. Okay. Uh, so, if you take a current measurement, um, you will be able to understand how much is the range, right? So, if 10 ampere is taken, in order to fully discharge the battery from fully charged to fully discharged, you need two hours. And if you are running for two hours at 30 kilometers per hour, uh, in two hours, you can cover a distance of two times of this, which is 60, right? So this is how you have calculated. And in order to measure this current, you need a clamp on meter or a current meter, current measuring device. So, uh, so here, um, 
This is about the range of an electric scooter from the battery basics. Uh, let us talk about uh, another couple of uh, uh, things, right? Um, where we are going to make an analogy of uh, DC power supply with battery. Okay, so battery has a limited energy, as I told you. Battery doesn't keep the same terminal voltage always. Um, that is the difference between a uh, uh, DC power supply. Right? So DC power supply can actually maintain the same terminal voltage because it is receiving the energy uh, which is coming from the grid as an AC source. Right? So a DC power supply can maintain the terminal voltage always. Right? And uh, uh, battery capacity uh, is going to reduce over the time and use. Okay? So how we can do this analogy? So consider a water bottle and uh, you have a limited uh, possibility of uh, storing the water, right? And consider a sea behind this uh, sea uh, where you have an infinite, uh, almost infinite uh, capacity of storing the water, right? So the amount of water inside a sea is kind of uh, not measurable. So a DC power supply is kind of an uh, infinite source of energy and a battery is a kind of a limited uh, source of energy. But if you are aware, if you are observing a very small entity inside this water, you, you can assume that uh, the battery is for some point of time or some consideration acting like a DC power supply. Okay, so this is about uh, the battery basics and uh, I hope you got the idea about uh, the difference between a DC power supply and a big battery and uh, what are the basics of uh, battery. Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to now uh, show you some of the uh, pictures, right, uh, where we are going to uh, have a look at uh, how e batteries will look like, right. We are going to uh, take uh, into account, right, uh, how EV batteries will be uh, looking like. So if I search, uh, on a Google, right? And if I just show you some of the images, right? Um, let us see some images of electric vehicle batteries, right? So what you are able to see here, uh, let's say, uh, so this is an image uh, for uh, EV battery pack. And you, you can see a lot of number of cells, right? They are connected together in order to make an entire electric vehicle battery pack. So an electric vehicle battery pack is a combination of many cells connected together. And if I show you this combination, it, it is exactly like this. So if you see this one unit of green color is basically one cell. And if you connect more number of cells, right? Uh, these are exactly the similar uh, cells as AA and AAA size of your uh, remote controller cells, right? Uh, but those chemistry are different. Those cells are not rechargeable sometimes, uh, but these cells are lithium-ion cells and slightly uh, higher in length and diameter. So this cylindrical cells actually make an electric vehicle battery pack. And uh, this one cell is not able to actually uh, take the entire load of a big electric vehicle. And therefore we need probably uh, hundreds and thousands of that, okay? So hundreds and thousands of uh, these cells are connected in the module and these modules will be together connected, uh, which is going to make a battery pack. And if you, if you have seen this, uh, this is a kind of um, the Tesla battery pack where 18650 cells are used. So you can see there are a lot of number of cells in, uh, arranged in a module. And there are uh, a good number of uh, uh, series connected cells and parallel connected cells. They together is going to form one electric uh, vehicle battery pack. Okay, so with this, uh, I hope you have got a good idea, right? If you have seen this uh, uh, battery pack enclosure, right? So that there will be a lot of cells inside and there will be an enclosure uh, where the final positive and negative uh, terminals will be coming out. So if you have got this understanding, uh, we can now discuss about uh, what are uh, what are the actual uh, 
ways in which we can analyze a battery pack. Okay, so let me show you how we can do this analysis. So, if I take an example of uh, four number of cell series and five number of cells in parallel, uh, that group of battery pack, how it will look like. So, we are going to take five number of cells and this five number of cells are connected in parallel. So, if I take this, uh, basically I'm going to make a short circuit or make a connection of all positive terminals in the bottom and all negative terminals in the top. Okay. And now this particular combination of this one group is called one cell series with five parallel. Okay. So this is a one group of five parallel cells. Now, if I take uh, another uh, kind of, uh, let's say, cell cell group right if i take another similar group which are now inverted right uh, where if i assume the positive terminal is here right for uh, the blue color or a blue group of cells i'm going to assume that uh, the positive terminal is here on the top of uh, this right and when you have a positive terminal um, over here and if you join this two, right, where you make a connection from this to this, first to first, second to second, right, and third to third, and the last to last, you are actually going to make a series connection, right? So this is one unit of five parallel group. Uh, this is second unit of another five parallel group. And if you join them together, uh, you are going to make a series connection of parallel connected cell group. And that is going to make 2S5P, right? If, if I join them together, so I have this as a positive terminal and uh, this will be a negative terminal. So if I have this kind of battery, uh, this will be called as a two cell series, five, pair, five cell parallel battery. Okay, so how do I make four cell uh, series? and uh, five parallel. So if I do like that, if I take uh, another group of five cells, right? And if I take another group of uh, five uh, parallel cells, and if I, if I join them together, right? If I make a connection between them, then we are going to have a uh, four cell five P connection. So this is just a 20 number of cells, and this kind of 20 number of cells um, might be useful uh, if you have, let's say, a 12 volt battery pack, right? So usually the lithium ion uh, uh, cells are uh, three volts each. And uh, uh, if you take four cells uh, in series, you will have around 12 uh, to 13 voltage. And uh, you have five number of parallel cells. So this is going to make uh, a 12 volt battery pack, okay? Now, if you have seen this kind of a battery pack, right? Probably you have seen this kind of a battery pack. How? Uh, let me tell you how. You have seen a laptop battery pack, right? And if at all your old laptop battery pack um, was replaced, right? And if you are an engineer like me, or if you are a, a curious uh, person interested to learn and uh, do experiment with the things, you might have opened up uh, this and you might have seen there are six number of cells in a laptop battery pack. Okay, so this is how a laptop battery pack will look inside. And it's basically uh, three cells in, uh, six cells in series or, uh, or a different kind of a con configuration. It can be uh, three cells in uh, series and two in parallel, which is three is two P or it can be six cell in series. So six cells in series is going to make around, uh, uh, let's say 18 to 19 volt. And that's what is a, uh, uh, what is written in on your charger as well, right? So many of the charger of your laptop are 19.2 uh, volt. And that's uh, uh, exactly around uh, six volt, uh, six number of cells in series. Okay, so how can you know about how your laptop battery pack is uh, doing, right? So guys, you can try this command. 
Um, if you are in front of a laptop now, uh, you, you can try this and you can actually uh, have a look at your battery report. Okay, so let us do this activity, guys. Um, it will be obviously fun, right? And you, you will definitely learn more about uh, what you are doing with your laptop battery and uh, what is the status of your laptop battery. So um, let me type this command into the chat box uh, so that you guys are able to uh, create your battery report. So let me type this into the chat box. So go to command window and uh, type this power CFG with this power configuration slash battery report. So uh, let me also go to my uh, command window. So I'm typing command window. Uh, hey guys, is my command window uh, visible to you all? Okay, Jay, one minute. Let me stop, start sharing again. So, okay, so I have shared my screen. I hope this is uh, visible to you now. Okay, so just go to your command window and uh, type your command as uh, power CFD slash battery report. I have also given in the chat box. You can type this. And uh, once you press enter, uh, okay. So probably with this killing laptop, I do not have permission. Um, because I do not have the admin rights of uh, this killing laptop, but uh, you will be getting a battery report uh, saved into your documents. Okay, so there will be an HTML file or a web page uh, kind of a file uh, where your battery report will be saved. Now, uh, you can actually have a look at battery report and uh, you, you can actually understand uh, what is uh, the kind of, um, let's say, what is the kind of uh, battery usage that you have, right? So, if I search for someone's battery report, right, and how it will look like, uh, it's interesting to see uh, at uh, battery report. Okay, so what you will be able to see in the battery report is something like this. And uh, uh, probably, yeah, so here are the uh, notifications, right? So when you type your battery report, uh, you are going to have uh, uh, this kind of details, right? What is the name of your computer? And uh, uh, what is the name of your battery manufacturer, right? And uh, what is the design capacity? So here, the design capacity in the image I'm showing is uh, 60.26 um, watt hours, right? Or 60,206 milliwatt hours, which is basically uh, 60 watt hours, right? So how a battery is, how a laptop battery is basically 60 watt hours, right? So let me show you uh, that calculation. So uh, basically, um one cell right okay now um, let me open the calculator so one cell uh, is going to be of 3.63 volt and the uh, uh, voltage multiplied with ampere hours is going to be watt hours okay so one cell is 3.63 volt nominal multiplied with uh, let's say 3 ampere hour capacity uh, that is going to be 10 0.89 and if you are using such six number of cells it is going to be 65 or around 60 watt hours so this is a typical configuration of six number of cells in series right uh, where you have 60 watt hours of battery capacity okay so i hope you guys are able to follow this calculation uh, let me um, do it one more time or i can show you in the history uh, so if you have a one volt uh, one cell of 3.63 volt each, 
and uh, ampere hour capacity of each battery pack is around uh, uh, three ampere hours. Uh, the total energy, total watt hours per cell is 10.89 watt hours. And if you have six number of such cells, your overall battery pack capacity is 65 uh, watt hours, which is something similar to 60 watt hours. Now, what is a full charge capacity, right? And how much is a cycle count? It, it depends on your operating system. It depends on your battery, right? And if you guys are using a laptop uh, where uh, your battery um, is not defined or is not genuine, uh, you will not be able to see anything over here, right? Uh, you, you will not get any values over here uh, in, in this. So now, if you look into your uh, report again, right, uh, what you will be looking at is uh, what is the recent usage and uh, how much is the capacity remaining, right? So on this date, uh, you are having this much of capacity. And on this date, you are having this much of uh, capacity. Uh, according to your usage. So your battery report is going to show you uh, how you are using your um, battery and what is the battery backup time and for how much hours you have connected the AC supply, how much duration you have connected the uh, power supply, which is basically a battery charger and for how much hours uh, you are using the battery. Okay, so here um, on this date and this, uh, between this date and this date, uh, only 12 hours are used uh, for battery. The remaining all hours are uh, used for EC supply. So this is uh, how you can actually take a look at uh, what uh, you are doing, right, with your uh, uh, laptop battery pack. And if you if you see this battery capacity history, right, if you are able to see this battery capacity history, uh, you will be able to see. Uh, as on today, right, how much is your capacity which is left? So earlier, when you install a new battery uh, from the life of, from the beginning, uh, it was 60 watt hours and now it is 58.6 watt hours. Okay, so this is a to, this, this is kind of a uh, battery capacity history uh, which you would definitely like to have a look at it. Okay, so why do we have this much of data of the battery? Because we have a Windows operating system, which is a uh, kind of a high-end uh, uh, battery system, right, or, or operating system. And uh, you, you can actually understand about, uh, let's say, uh, what is your usage and consumption and everything. Uh, all the data will be actually recorded. Right, and the same thing is going to happen with an EV battery pack as well. So inside an electric vehicle, um, the battery management system is one such system which is going to monitor and provide control and protection as well. Uh, and it is, it is also going to do the uh, data logging of uh, important events in the in life of a battery, right? And it will also take uh, state of charge and state of health, right? Um, and uh, uh, other parameters. So I hope you uh, got uh, this information useful. And uh, I think if you have tried uh, the power configuration command in your laptop, right? And if you have any question or or if you want to know anything more about, uh, let's say whatever we discussed uh, in the first hour today, right? Uh, feel free to ask your questions. So I'm now going to look at uh, the chat box questions and I will be uh, answering them one after another. So, okay. So Ajinkya is asking about, uh, uh, are there any drawbacks or effect if one of the cell is damaged due to some reason? Uh, yes. Uh, so if any of the cell uh, is damaged, right? Or uh, uh, so, so normally the cell doesn't get uh, damaged. The uh, uh, electrical connection, or uh, maybe may get open circuited, right? Or uh, the fuse protection may operate. Um, so if, if any of the cell is going to uh, undergo such a, such an open connection, then probably your uh, entire battery pack will be. Uh, showing the zero volt, right? Because it's open, open connection, right? So, 
So many times uh, the laptop uh, battery pack repairing person, uh, they will first look at uh, the connections and they will try to trace uh, whether all cells are uh, live or dead. Right. So if any of the cell is going to be dead, right, and because they are connected in series, um, it, it is going to affect in such a way that it is not going to allow the entire battery pack to work. Right. So yeah, but this is true for a series connected battery cells. It is not true for parallel connected battery cells. So in case of uh, parallel connected battery cells, if you have one of the circuit which is open, uh, still you can use the remaining part of the battery pack. So I hope this is clear to you, Ajinkya. And uh, I would like to go with uh, uh, next question from Palash. Okay. So guys, I will uh, I will take two minutes to drink some water, and uh, I will I will be back with uh, the question from Palash. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any question, uh, feel free to type into the chat box. I'm I'm going to address the questions, and uh, after that, we are going to uh, have a look at uh, a battery model uh, inside Simulink. So yeah, so we have got. 18 new questions okay so palash is asking um, in mobile also use battery how it is managed yes uh, in a cell phone uh, you have a single cell right um, so your battery pack voltage is around uh, uh, 3.6 volt and uh, you usually charge it from the 5 volt charger right um, so it's a example of a single cell um, application right so your cell phone is uh, having a single Lithium ion cell. Okay. Now, Vinod Kumar is asking how remaining ampere hour capacity is calculated. Um, so, battery management system is responsible to calculate this uh, or to estimate this uh, state of charge. Okay. And there are a couple of methods, um, and Coulomb counting is one of the methods which is popular for uh, uh, electric vehicle. Um, battery capacity calculation, right? So, yeah. Okay. Um, my screen is not clear. Okay, I hope it is clear now. Um, okay, so Lokesh is uh, saying why we multiply three in the calculation. Okay, so Lokesh, um, when we were discussing about uh, 60 watt hours for a battery pack. Okay, so let me show the calculator. Um, so how it is 60 watt hours, right? Why your usual laptop battery pack is 60 watt hours? So for, for some of you, it may be uh, 40 watt hours. If, if you have a large laptop, it may be 80 watt hours, but uh, how it is 60 uh, that I was uh, showing you um, the calculation. So every cell is uh, around 3.6 volt. And if I multiply voltage with ampere hour, it is going to be watt hours. So voltage times ampere is watt. And if I multiply 3.6 with three, it is almost around 10. And if we have six such number of cells in series, now we have total amount of energy equivalent to 64 watt hours. So I hope this is clear to you, Lokesh. Um, can we calculate as we see through this uh, report of the battery? Uh, say uh, Prandeep, uh, basically uh, you already have a state of charge, right? So let's say I am, I have plugged in my laptop right now um, to charge my battery, right? In order to just uh, take care if the power goes off, uh, I am, I'm still connected in the session, right? Um, so whatever is the level of the battery um, being shown, right? That is basically state of charge. So right now it is, for me, it is showing 93%. Uh, this is state of charge. Okay, uh, so I hope this is clear to you. And um, <clears throat> so there will not be any uh, state of charge value in the battery report, uh, but how your state of charge vary, right? And uh, for how much time you kept plugged in and for how much time you, you, have, you were running on battery, right? That, time duration is available in the report. Okay, so uh, I think location server the same question. Uh, okay, so Prasad is asking about uh, what is state of health. Um, so if you have seen um, 
Uh, so let's say state of health is like uh, how many years old the battery is. Okay. So let's say our human being is going to survive for 100 years. And if I say that uh, um, the, the, the 2021 age of a human being is 50 years, uh, I can say that. Uh, still 50 more years are pending for that person, okay? And I can say that the state of health is 50%. So state of health is a relative term. Um, basically, uh, you can uh, consider it as, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the amount of capacity which is left uh, to be used, right? So let me show you. Uh, I think we, we were discussing on uh, the battery report. So let's say at the beginning of the battery uh, life, you have your laptop battery back as uh, 60 watt hours. And uh, this 60 watt hours uh, are going to be now today, uh, after let's say two years of uh, laptop battery use, uh, it is around uh, 30 watt hours, right? As per your battery report, uh, you can say your battery is um, used for 50 percentage of its life or um, if you are comparing with its uh, uh, capacity which is full capacity at the uh, beginning of the life okay so state of health is a relative term and it is basically um, calculating the fading right or the aging effect of the battery so Prem is asking about is it important to unplug supply uh, or it doesn't affect the battery if it is the main plug, okay? Uh, interesting question. Uh, so, Prem, if you uh, keep uh, connected uh, your uh, charger, even if your battery is fully charged, right? If, even if you um, if you have 100% and you are not using the battery, uh, basically you are not allowing the battery to discharge. You are, you are uh, computer is going to take power from the uh, adapter. It will obviously take a little power from the adapter. It will not take uh, the charging power because the battery is fully charged. So battery will never overcharge because it has a battery management system. So if you see uh, uh, this image, right? Uh, yeah, this image, uh, there will be a small battery management system uh, over here, uh, which is not going to overcharge, which is not going to allow uh, this sends to overcharge. So overcharging will never happen, uh, but uh, your battery is fully charged and you're using the power which is required by your computer uh, from the AC mains through your charger. Okay, so yeah, but uh, should you unplug, right? Yes, so in my opinion, you should uh, regularly unplug and uh, keep using the batteries um, and uh, your computer should definitely run for uh, a few cycles uh, just after you have purchased a new laptop. Um, so you should definitely allow your batteries to discharge and then start charging. So if you do not allow your batteries to discharge, uh, probably um, its capacity is going to be um, not maintained, right? So it's, it's always better to uh, keep on using them. Okay, so Abhinash is asking uh, with reference to well to wheel uh, is factoring the loss of power during transmission. Uh, yeah, so I, I think Abhinash that was also taken into account. And uh, um, those things are uh, uh, kind of uh, transmission and distribution losses and um, all the components which are coming in between, for example, transformer. Uh, all these losses uh, have to be uh, calculated or should be taken into account. How many types of EV batteries? So EV batteries are usually, um, let's say, layered acid and lithium ion. In, in lithium ion also, there are five types. Uh, and people are trying with uh, new and new types of uh, batteries as well. So VJ, according to uh, me, there are uh, basically two types of batteries. One is lead acid, one is lithium ion, and there are again um, five different types of lithium ion batteries. Pramin Kumar is asking why can't we have a single large cell compared to individual cells in series and parallel? Uh, great question, Pramin. So, uh, if I talk about how many 
uh, what are the types of cells available, right? So this is just one small cell. And if I show you another uh, cell, right, uh, which is uh, quite large compared to, uh, let's say, other, uh, uh, other batteries, right? So they are going to be very uh, large, right? And uh, you have a, a kind of uh, uh, enough large batteries where um, you have, uh, let's say, uh, a very big cell, uh, which is of as uh, equal height as yourself, right? So if I show you this 18650 cell, which is a small cell, which is used in a laptop battery pack, it is 3.6 volt and 3200 mAh. And these are uh, its characteristics. And if you see on the other side, uh, there is a company called Winston Battery. Uh, they have a cell uh, which is 3.2 um, volt or 3.3 volt and 200 ampere hours, right? So this is one of the cell which is, uh, let's say kind of a very big in terms of its size. Um, it is possible to have a higher and higher capacity per cell, but it is not possible to have higher and higher voltages per cell. So therefore, uh, you definitely need to connect more number of cells in series in order to increase the uh, higher utilization voltage. So yeah, so that's the answer of uh, your question. Uh, let me go back to uh, the question. So, okay. So the question was from Praveen Kumar. Uh, I, I think I have answered this question. So you need definitely um, good large number of batteries. Now, now what is the problem with uh, is this cell, which is 200 AH cell, right? Uh, the cell in the yellow color with the highest dimensions uh, is the most risky element, right? And if one cell is going to fail, right? Or if one cell is going to compromise on its safety, uh, on its internal temperature, it, it's going to be a huge loss of energy, right? So it, it is better to manage small cells which are having less capacity then large cells which are having higher capacity. Okay, so this is how uh, uh, probably uh, it will be uh, affected. Okay, so okay, if EV battery is extra charged, then what will happen? Okay, so Priyanka is asking about what will happen if you are going to overcharge. So overcharging basically results into a uh, higher temperature. So what will happen if you are trying to add more water into a full glass? Okay, you are basically uh, going to have overflow, right? So if you, if you keep on adding charge to a fully charged battery, you are going to result into overflow. Now, it, it's not going to be overflow as a loss of extra water you are adding and you are going to use that. It may happen that the entire vessel or the entire glass uh, is going to have a blast or have an explosion, right? So the overcharged battery is going to increase the temperature and it will be a thermal runaway condition with an explosion. So therefore overcharging is to be uh, prevented. So how does a BMS decide which cell to charge first? Uh, there are a large number of cells. Um, so basically uh, you are going to charge uh, all the cells connected in series and it, it is not going to be the first this cell and uh, second, that cell. Uh, but let's say you have in your laptop battery pack, you have a uh, six number of cells in series. Uh, when you connect a charger, all cells uh, are going to receive the same charging ampere. Okay. And they are going to increase their voltage according to their uh, capacity and their characteristics. So, yeah. So that will be uh, taken care of because they are connected in series. Um, can we use this system uh, for backup power supply? Yes, Yuraj. Um, there are nowadays there are a lot of people uh, using uh, lithium batteries and lead acid batteries along with solar power, and uh, equally uh, they are using it for uh, backup power supply, which we call it as a UPS system. So Banerjee is asking why in laptop and mobile they don't uh, give out power cutoff when the battery is fully charged. In electric vehicle, there is power cutoff when 
battery is fully charged. Um, so uh, energy, uh, this is basically the function of a charger um, to uh, know about what is the voltage and what is the state of charge. So charger will be knowing what is the voltage and uh, it is going to keep on monitoring what is the voltage and uh, therefore this uh, voltage um, we will never be compromised, right? So it, it is not never going to uh, keep on charging if the voltage limit is reached. Now, um, similarly, there is no cutoff, right? Or uh, basically, uh, there is a cutoff, right? So charger is going to stop providing the power if the voltage is uh, going to be reached to the fully charged voltage, right? But it doesn't mean that you have to unplug the charger. The charger is going to automatically uh, stop providing further electrical energy to the battery. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Mohammed is asking why do the automobile company concentrate more on lithium-ion battery? Uh, is it because of fast charging? No. Uh, so Mohammed, uh, basically lithium-ion batteries have a lot of advantages such as uh, um, uh, its weight is going to be less compared to lead acid batteries. Uh, it is possible to have a uh, heavy discharge, right? So if you are accelerating your vehicle from uh, zero to 60 kilometers per hour in five seconds, for example, uh, you need a heavy current, right? And without the voltage being dropped. So for lithium ion batteries, even if you discharge heavily, it is not going to uh, compromise on its voltage, right? And there are uh, other characteristics, yes, definitely you can fast charge. Mm, but apart from that, the, these are other characteristics which make lithium ion batteries uh, more suitable. Um, okay, so how does BMS decide which cell to charge first? I think I answered that. Uh, sir, can we charge battery using solar power? Um, Yes, Pallas, you can definitely charge uh, batteries in the solar power. So, uh, yes, it is quite possible mm -hmm. because it's a DC source and uh, your battery is also a DC. Uh, you, you need to convert the energy into the right wave, into the right form, uh, which is required by the battery. So the solar PV characteristics and uh, battery uh, voltage and battery charging characteristics has to be matched by a uh, interfacing DC DC converter. So, um, Vishwa Bhushan is asking a difficult question Can Tesla company have a bright future in India? Uh, yes, I believe so. Abhijit uh, explained the difference between Formula E cars and normal EV. Um, so, Abhijit, Formula electric uh, vehicles are basically racing vehicles and uh, uh, they are designed for a different kind of application, right? So, you are in a, in a normal routine uh, when you are a uh, customer, you are not going to run your vehicle at 120 kilometers per hour and you are not going to uh, do a racing in your routine, right? And so, so the formula electric uh, vehicles, right? They are superior in terms of their acceleration performance. And uh, if you want a good acceleration performance, you need a lot of power. And uh, also uh, you need to design them in, in, in a way that uh, you know, they, are, they are very low height uh, because of their aerodynamic drag is very low and therefore they can run at a uh, very high speed. So there are a lot of differences between um, uh, EV for uh, uh, for a passenger vehicle and the formula electric car. Um, Shiva is asking what is the battery shelf life? Uh, Shiva, the shelf life is basically uh, how much time um, you can store the battery in a shelf, right? So shelf is basically a storage, right? So let's say battery is manufactured in the month of uh, January, 2021. Uh, but it is lying idle. Uh, the batteries are not being used in any of the application uh, for six months, right? Let's say June uh, 2021. So uh, how much is that shelf life? Okay, so for how much time I can just keep the batteries idle in the shelf um, without any usage, that is called a uh, shelf life. So Shivam is asking what about lithium polymer? Um, 
battery in EVs. Uh, yes, uh, people are uh, evaluating that type of batteries as well. Um, can we go for uh, hybrid cells? Um, so, for me, uh, people normally do not prefer hybrid cells because we want the same characteristics. So, whatever I'm showing on the you know, left screen, that is a very small cell. You can see it's a cylindrical cell where you have a uh, side view and the top view. And here you see the image of uh, very large cells, right? We cannot combine this 18650 cell with this prismatic cell and make an electric vehicle battery pack because they have a very different characteristics. In order to make a uniform battery pack, you need to have uh, all the cells which are of same capacity, right? And of same type. So, yeah. Uh, but yes, it is possible to use uh, super capacitors and uh, batteries. Okay, so non-rechargeable and rechargeable, basically um, the fundamental difference is um, uh, the chemistry, right? Um, so if you have a uh, non-reversible chemical reactions, right? Uh, which are not allowed in a, in a uh, chemistry of a battery, basically it's a non-rechargeable battery. So in a rechargeable battery, it's possible for the chemical reactions to get reversed. So Shreya is asking, is that BMS also available in mobile and laptop charger? Um, BMS is available in the battery pack itself. Okay. So whatever uh, image I was showing to you uh, here, if you have seen, uh, there will be a small battery management system uh, inside the, uh, near the cell itself, right? So the battery management system is located uh, just above the cells, just near to the cells or just uh, within the battery pack. And uh, the, so the BMS is not present in the uh, charger, right? So Shreya, the battery management system is uh, an electronic circuit, a small PCB, which is present near to the um, cells. So, how much power does the EV consume? Um, so, Subhu, if I ask you the, another question, how you drive your electric vehicle? Uh, it, it depends on how much power it is going to consume, right? So, it depends on how much acceleration you want, how much top speed you want. Okay, so thanks a lot, guys. And um, I think I covered many of the questions. Uh, are there any battery manufacturing companies in India? Okay, great question. So, Parandi, uh, there are battery manufacturing companies and uh, uh, there used to be a battery, uh, lithium ion battery manufacturing plant. Uh, but if you compare the capacity of uh, lithium ion battery manufacturing, uh, India has almost uh, zero manufacturing capacity. There are few plants, there are few companies who are uh, saying that they, they have started or they are going to start uh, manufacturing. But uh, most of the companies are going to uh, take the cells as a raw material and then they will make their own battery pack. So if you ask me, there are a lot of companies in India which are going to make the battery pack, but there are uh, very few companies who are actually making the cells. Okay, so Rahul is asking, uh, sometimes there is issue with a, a laptop charger. Uh, yes, it can happen with EV. Um, it's a combination of hardware and software, right? So it's an embedded system. If you have any issue, any bug, uh, yes, the charging may not happen, right? So you need a light, right kind of battery, right kind of a charger. And uh, yeah, and um, yeah, so similar problems can occur with EV batteries as well. Okay, so thanks a lot, guys. Uh, let us move on and let us try to understand uh, how to uh, do a simulation for electric vehicle battery pack. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to now show you um, an electric vehicle uh, simulation where uh, uh, we have... Um, let's say the entire electric vehicle, and uh, we need to understand what is a type of current that is being drawn from the uh, battery pack. So what I'm showing you now is um, 
kind of an electric vehicle model. Uh, obviously, this doesn't look like an electric vehicle. Uh, if you are looking at a Simulink screen for the first time, uh, this doesn't look like an electric vehicle, right? Uh, but this is a mathematical representation of electric vehicle. And uh, if you are interested um, in learning more about how to model an electric vehicle uh, with MATLAB and Simulink, uh, there is a YouTube video which you can uh, refer. Uh, which is there on our uh, Skilllink YouTube channel. Uh, but let's say I'm assuming you are the first, uh, you are the person who are uh, uh, looking at um, the Simulink for the first time, right? So let me tell you what is Simulink, uh, what is this software? So this particular software is basically an advanced calculator. Uh, I will say an advanced, uh, engineering mathematics calculator. Uh, even scientists also use this uh, type of uh, uh, calculator and uh, they do a lot of applications, uh, including uh, video processing and image processing. And uh, it, it is possible to analyze uh, how the power is available from the power plant to your house and transmission and distribution. And uh, a lot of mechanical engineering is also uh, possible with uh, uh, the Simulink. So Simulink is a kind of an advanced calculator for engineering applications. And uh, what we can do uh, with this, right? So we, we can basically uh, create uh, a model uh, where we analyze uh, what is going to happen with the uh, electric vehicle batteries. Okay, so if I have an electric vehicle battery and if I want to analyze uh, what happens to electric vehicle batteries, um, then we can um, do that simulation um, with the help of a Simulink, right? So those who don't know uh, what is a Simulink, um, Simulink is a block diagram based uh, language uh, where you have to take the blocks, connect them together, configure them and run your simulation. So Simulink is very useful for system level simulation and uh, it is also possible to define your own model and it is also possible to you know, create your own uh, blocks, right? So let me take a new file and I'm going to take a new Simulink model. So uh, my new Simulink model is basically uh, uh, going to focus on uh, um, batteries, right? And uh, uh, I'm going to add a um, battery and we are going to do a simple simulation with the uh, help of uh, battery. So I'm waiting for the new file to be open. And in the meantime, I'm going to share with you uh, what basically happens inside an electric vehicle, right? So you are not going to run the vehicle uh, for the constant speed, right? So let's say how you are going to run your vehicle. Um, let me show that to you. Uh, so here is a speed uh, scope, right? Uh, where I have run my simulation for uh, Artemis rural driving cycle uh, for 108 to seconds. And if I run this uh, for 1082 seconds, uh, I can actually check how your speed uh, is varying with reference to time and how your vehicle speed and how your expected speed, right, or driving cycle speed are uh, varying with ref respect to each other. So let me open that. Okay. So uh, while this is, uh, taking time, uh, let me go back to uh, the presentation and uh, share the link for the YouTube video. If you are interested in uh, making your own EV model in uh, Simulink, uh, you can refer to our uh, YouTube video. I'm going to share uh, the YouTube video link uh, in the chat box. So 
Guys, at uh, Skilling YouTube channel, we have a lot of interesting videos uh, coming up uh, with mechanical and uh, electrical engineering. And uh, you can see um, a, a lot of such uh, free workshops um, where we talk about uh, important engineering concepts. So if I uh, talk about uh, how to model an electric vehicle, uh, this is the, the YouTube video which I'm talking about. Um, let me share the link with you. So I'm going to I'm going to share this uh, in the meeting room. So you can refer uh, to this link if you are uh, interested on. Uh, how to develop a model and yeah so this is the result which i was talking about um so for uh, the artemis rural driving cycle uh, which takes around uh, 110 kilometers per hour at the top speed uh, i am able to almost match uh, between uh, the drive cycle uh, as a reference input and the vehicle speed as an output so if i uh, show you uh, about what happens. Um, here you can see uh, the vehicle speed and uh, you can also see uh, the drive cycle reference speed. Um, so if I have uh, these two speeds, probably you can see how uh, the yellow and the blue are uh, overlapped on each other. And if I, if I zoom in, you will be able to see uh, how close they are uh, following, right? So my actual vehicle speed is following uh, the drive cycle speed here. Uh, you can consider a situation where uh, uh, we uh, say that uh, you, you have actually uh, a friend sitting next to you and he is going to tell you what should be the speed in your uh, speedometer, right? So your friend is going to tell you, uh, or he is going to give you a command uh, that, okay, what should be the next speed at the next second? And if I keep on uh, telling you what should be the speed at uh, next second, um, then you will be um, in a, you will be the kind of person who, is, who, are, who is following this. And if you are following this, uh, probably you have an idea, uh, you have uh, got a good idea about, uh, kind of whether to apply accelerator or brake, right? So if I tell you the speed, which is less than the current speed, I, I obviously need to apply brakes. And if, if you are my friend, and if you are uh, going to give me a command, which is, uh, um, let's say, uh, higher speed than the present, um, then definitely you will be uh, able to uh, clearly decide that you, you need to press a uh, throttle pedal. So here is a zoom in section of uh, the speed and uh, probably you can uh, see here uh, how the vehicle speed which is in yellow is uh, uh, actually trying to follow the uh, blue line right and uh, yeah so this is about uh, the speed and what kind of current is going to be taken from the battery um, that also we can uh, um, have a look at from the model. So if I am interested in looking at the value of the current, uh, I need to probably look into the current. And um, now I'm interested only in uh, learning about EV batteries. Okay, so I need to take this current and uh, discharge my battery uh, for this type of current, right? And I can take a uh, state of charge and I can uh, try to understand uh, how my state of charge is going to vary. So uh, let us take a new file and let us try to uh, discharge the battery uh, in, in the similar fashion as if uh, it is going to be discharged by uh, electric vehicle. So I'm going to add a block, uh, which is basically a battery block. So let me add that block to this. So here uh, I have a battery block. 
and uh, I'm going to keep that uh, block uh, as the first block in uh, in my uh, simulation. And I'm going to now uh, discharge uh, this particular battery uh, as if it is going to be discharged like an electric vehicle. So how EV is going to discharge a battery, right? Uh, you need to understand this uh, very clearly. Separate simulation for, for the batteries, right? So you need to understand what is the type of current that you have. So if you look at the uh, current scope, so I think it is taking much time uh, for uh, uh, the scope to open. Um, but while this scope is uh, getting open, uh, you are going to see both the type of uh, current, uh, which are positive and negative. Uh, let me show you here. Um, so the value of current is something like this. Okay. So the highest amount of current taken is around 430 ampere positive. And the highest amount of negative current that we have received is around minus 275. So how the current is going to be so uh, choppy like this, right? Because uh, the motor is going to take much amount of current from the battery whenever you apply acceleration. Right. So whenever you apply acceleration, it is going to take a steep uh, value of current. It, it's going to take a lot of uh, higher value of current. And whenever you apply a brake, uh, for example, here uh, at uh, around 290 seconds, you are applying a um, brake. Right. And therefore, it's, it's going to provide a uh, regenerative braking and your current value is going to be negative like this. OK, so this is how. Uh, the battery current will be there whenever you uh, actually run your electric vehicle. So the current values is, are going to fluctuate a lot according to how you are accelerating and uh, how you are uh, um, applying the brakes. And uh, it can be both positive and negative. Right? So let us try to discharge uh, the battery pack in um, something similar to this way. Okay. So if I want to do this, uh, what I need to do is I need to take a battery and uh, I need to uh, discharge this, right? So instead of uh, connecting an entire EV to this battery, I'm just uh, going to um, connect a controlled current source, right? So I have a control uh, current source, right? And uh, I'm going to take this control current source in the direction such that I'm, I'm considering the uh, discharge current as positive, okay, and uh, probably uh, you can um, uh, take the remaining blocks um, uh, into uh, your model and you can uh, run a simulation which is um, the EV discharge, uh, which is similar to um, a battery, right, uh, or or electric vehicle, right. So I'm going to just rotate this. We'll be connecting the positive uh, with uh, uh, over here. So I have a controlled current source. Okay. So, and I'm also interested in. Uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, measuring certain uh, parameters, right? And we will be doing it by uh, the measurement terminal, which is called M, right? So here uh, I have connected a battery, right? Uh, to something which is called a control current source. Now, how do I uh, basically do a control current source, right? Um, I, I need to actually um, connect something here, which is going to define how much is going to be the current in this line. Okay. And uh, for time being, I can assume this as a uh, constant. Okay. Uh, it's obviously not constant, but for uh, simplicity, um, if I take this constant and uh, connect it, uh, this is how I want to discharge. I want to discharge my this battery at one ampere. 
and if I make it full, um, I think it will look like this. And if you are interested in uh, uh, measuring this, uh, probably we need a, a, a BMUX, right, uh, in order to uh, separate out those signals uh, which are coming from M port. And uh, let me rotate this and connect a scope. So I'm going to connect scope here. Okay, so yeah, it is taking some time. So let me rotate this and uh, connect this scope here. And I can take uh, another signal as well uh, to this scope uh, where I want to see um, the two outputs, right? Um, so let me make it more clear to you. So what exactly we are trying to see uh, is um, um, what is the state of charge and uh, what is the voltage uh, of this battery. So all these measurement uh, terminals are available. Uh, here and I can actually uh, uh, use this for uh, my measurement purpose. Okay, so if I click on this uh, DMUX, I can uh, actually uh, check out uh, how many um, uh, kind of uh, uh, signals are available and how do we uh, split them. So uh, let's say. Uh, we want to discharge this battery to uh, full, right? And uh, if I double click on this battery parameters, I'm going to uh, kind of uh, uh, configure these parameters, right? So let's say uh, we have a 7.2 volt and 5.4 ampere hour uh, battery pack. And let's say uh, if we have a 5.4 ampere hour battery pack, and if I want to run uh, my simulation for an hour, I need to uh, discharge it at uh, 5.4 amperes. So if I uh, discharge this at 5.4 amperes, and uh, I'm assuming here we have a fully charged battery, right? So uh, initial state of charge, uh, which is 100. And uh, uh, let us, let us try, try to uh, simulate this for uh, uh, an hour. So this is uh, 3600, uh, which are uh, 60 times 60, uh, 60 seconds every minute and 60 minutes every hour. Um, and I am going to now be ready to discharge this battery uh, for the constant current discharge. And uh, imagine a situation where you have a uh, LED torch, okay, uh, which is based on a lithium ion battery. So if you have a LED torch, and if you just turn on the torch and it is going to discharge for continuously, right? For uh, the same intensity of the light, right? Uh, you can assume that battery is going to be discharged at a constant rate. Okay, so LED light uh, being operated from a lithium ion battery is the right example which we are trying to simulate now. And if I want to simulate uh, what is going to happen with uh, uh, electric vehicle uh, battery, uh, I just need to feed the amount of current uh, which we need it for uh, uh, over here, which I need to replace it over here. And it, it can be uh, a workspace variable. It can be uh, uh, using a signal builder block. So let me try um, this um, where I will be adding a power GUI block. So if I add this, Okay, and I need to, um, so what I'm looking at uh, is basically the measurement terminals. And uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, what kind of signals are uh, uh, available uh, from this. Okay, so, uh, and, and we are interested in looking at uh, the values uh, of uh, uh, the scope variable over here. So, if we run this simulation, uh, this is going to be uh, a continuous current discharge of an electric vehicle battery. 
and uh, let's say you are interested in uh, knowing about uh, what will happen if i run my vehicle for one week right and every day i'm going to run for um, 10 kilometers right so let's say in our earlier simulation we have seen uh, that your overall distance right was 17.4 kilometer if you can see here so if i have a current signature or if i have a current values for all the 17 kilometers i need to feed in this value cyclically or uh, over the period of time uh, again and again in order to simulate what happens to a battery uh, for the week time okay and if you are interested in uh, um, what is the remaining capacity or what is the state of health of a battery or uh, how much is uh, the capacity loss uh, in the period of six months in the period of one year right you can do that analysis as well uh, with the help of uh, simulink so uh, let us uh, compile this and probably you will be uh, able to look at uh, voltage and state of charge and uh, uh, if you are interested uh, in uh, building something where let's say you want to uh, build a battery management system okay so let me tell you uh, how you can start uh, working on a battery management system on your uh, own so you need to understand uh, what is a battery management system and you need to kind of uh, uh, implement a particular protection algorithm or uh, you need to yeah, um, kind of understand how to calculate state of charge and everything Right. So if you do that, um, you can uh, use MATLAB and Symbolink uh, in order to uh, kind of uh, take uh, that, right? So I think I finish uh, uh, simulating this and uh, um, for an hour, I just simulated uh, this battery and uh, let us see what we have uh, as uh, the parameters, okay? So I'm going to... I'll show you the parameters in a different scope. I hope uh, the scope is visible to you all. And uh, okay, so when we are going to uh, see this, right, uh, the first thing is uh, we have a state of charge, right? And uh, uh, the state of charge is the first one. Uh, it's we were considering it as a fully charged battery. Okay, and uh, the yellow one is a state of charge and it is coming from zero to 100. Uh, the blue one is basically the value of the current, which is 5.4 ampere, it is continuous. And uh, this one uh, is basically uh, the voltage, right? The, so the second curve is basically the voltage. And if I uh, check this, right, I, I just need to kind of, uh, uh, change the properties of the second curve if, because it's showing from 0 to 100. Um, let me configure this uh, properly. Yeah, so here it is a discharge curve of a battery and uh, you can see it starts from uh, 8.3 volt and it, it goes up to uh, 4.5 volt as a fully discharged battery. So this is how uh, you can do a simulation uh, simply uh, yourself, right, uh, to understand what happens, right? And uh, the MathWorks battery models are so powerful, you can actually uh, do temperature effect, right? You can simulate the aging effect. Obviously, you have to enable this and you have to uh, add the aging related parameters here, right? And uh, whatever inputs you are going to give accordingly, it is going to calculate um, the performance and it is going to give you all the parameters in the output. Okay, so this battery model uh, can actually help you simulate uh, what will happen if the temperature is changing, what will happen if uh, the aging effect is there, right? And uh, let's say instead of you are running for this as one hour, right? If you try to run uh, this for uh, let's say 100 hours, right? Uh, you can actually take a look at uh, what is going to happen uh, with the age of the battery. How much is the percentage capacity fail? Okay, so here, uh, if I'm interested in feeding the current, uh, I can actually uh, use a variable called as from workspace, 
and uh, I need to just assign the name of the variable uh, where I have a battery current simulated from my other model. And I can feed that current, uh, which is uh, saved in the workspace from here, uh, where it is uh, sim out. And I, I just need to feed that current over here and I can uh, see what is going to happen with this battery pack. Okay, obviously that current is very, very high. Uh, we have taken only 7.2 volt battery pack uh, just for um, the first simulation. Uh, you, you need to make sure uh, you have the right uh, data entered before you uh, run your simulation with the uh, actual uh, EV battery pack current. Uh, so I hope guys, uh, this information was useful. And before I uh, end this, and before I come to a conclusion of this session, uh, let me show you how you can actually model uh, the battery management system. Okay, so let's say um, I am interested um, to know uh, what is going to happen at the end of uh, discharge, right? So what, what will happen to electric vehicle battery uh, when you are going to come to uh, end of discharge, okay? So I have four number of cells connected in series and I'm measuring this voltage and uh, I have a contactor uh, where, which is basically a protection switch and I'm going to discharge this uh, with the um, electric vehicle battery current. Okay, and uh, I'm assuming these are four modules where each uh, has, uh, let's say, 12 number of cells in series, right? And overall, there are uh, 48 number of cells in series, right? So if I have um, this configuration and uh, I want to know what is going to happen to the battery pack and uh, whenever, uh, if I keep on running my um, battery cycle and what will happen when the state of charge of the battery is going to be zero, right? Um, so at that time, there will be an under voltage protection implemented by a battery management system. So this particular logic is basically the under voltage uh, protection logic. So my battery management system is going to continuously measure um, the each cell voltage connected in series and it is going to compare with a, a limit of under voltage. So usually the each cell voltage is 3.60 volt. And uh, uh, each cell voltage is usually 3.60 volt and uh, the under voltage limit can be uh, something between 2.8 volt to 2.5 volt, uh, depending on the cell chemistry. This is equal to this, then you need to kind of uh, trigger the switch, right? You cannot allow uh, to discharge the battery if uh, there is going to be an under voltage for any of the cell. And how do I take any of the cell? By taking an OR operation. So if I do this, uh, I can actually simulate and I can show you how, if you are going to discharge uh, this battery, uh, series of uh, batteries uh, for, uh, for the case of uh, um, what happens to a EV battery whenever uh, the fully discharged condition is going to arrive, uh, there will be an under voltage fault. Uh, obviously, there will be an indicator of uh, state of charge where um, the user will get to know that, okay, now only 10% battery is left, now only 5% battery is left, and I need to plug in the charger. But even if you keep on running, right, what is going to happen? Uh, there will be a dis battery disconnected from the load, right? And that is called the under voltage. Uh, protection, right? So this is a kind of under voltage protection implementation uh, for a BMS in a uh, simple concept. So I hope you guys uh, have a good idea about uh, how to start using MATLAB and Simulink. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of other things where you can think of uh, a charger. So let's say you have a grid power supply and you, you think of a CC and CV charger and uh, you can actually uh, consider charging and discharging of the battery as well as uh, life cycle. As well. and, and some of the participants were asking, uh, can we charge the battery with a solar cell? Yes. Uh, if you have a battery pack and if you have a solar panel, uh, don't connect them together. Uh, do a simulation in a MATLAB, right? And try to know what will happen, right? Uh, and, and then you can design a better DC-DC converter, which is acting as a both uh, MPPT controller as well as battery charger. and you can definitely come up with uh, uh, good ideas.
right? So I hope this uh, information was useful to you. Uh, I'm going to take up uh, a couple of questions uh, which are based on uh, whatever we discussed today. And uh, we can uh, then uh, uh, have a um, uh, discussion on the uh, like, uh, conclusion of uh, what you learned in these two days. Okay, so before the final conclusion and the summary, I would like to uh, kind of um, know if you guys have any questions. So I can see a lot of things in the chat box. Okay, uh, thanks Ramiz. Um, okay, thanks Ashok. Okay, so, okay, I think our uh, scaling team will be, um, uh, helping you to get a recorded session. Uh, and, oh, yeah, uh, yes, what's up? Yeah, okay. So, uh, we will upload the recorded session in our YouTube channel uh, soon. Uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search for Skilling in YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, not just today's recorded video, but we also have other uh, informative videos, other webinars, everything uploaded in the Skilling channel. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, thanks a lot, Shiva. So let me take up a couple of questions. Uh, there is an interesting question from Sara Joes. Um, okay, um, sorry. There is a question from Prem. I would like to take that first. At the end of simulation of uh, 3600 second, there was a voltage drop towards M. Uh, why was that happening? Uh, so Prem, basically all the batteries are uh, going to lose the voltage uh, whenever they are going to be discharged. And there is a by default uh, electrochemical phenomena happening in the battery. Now, how that voltage reduces with reference to the capacity? Now, let me show you that. Um, so, let us go back to this simulation and uh, let us have a look at uh, the results. So, probably previous, uh, not this one. So Prem is asking for why there is a uh, sudden voltage drop okay, in the end. So till 3000 seconds, the uh, voltage was above 7.5 or uh, above uh, 7, I will say. And uh, then there is a drastically uh, drop in the voltage, right? So uh, this is kind of a non-linear nature of uh, lithium-ion batteries. And it is, it is also there in the fully charged condition and a fully discharged condition. So... Uh, you can imagine uh, a lithium-ion battery frame as a, a kind of a, um, uh, a energy container, right? Uh, which is going to behave like this, right? And this is due to the uh, electrochemical behavior of uh, the batteries. So how do how MATLAB is able to know that this is an electrochemical behavior? If you just click on uh, the battery, right? And if you try to uh, understand about uh, uh, it's uh, discharge rate, right? Uh, and if I if I plot this, because because this data is entered in this model, right? That's why we are getting that kind of a uh, discharge curve. So if I plot this, uh, I'm going to get a natural characteristics of a battery which is uh, added into this model. Okay, so the natural characteristics of the battery which is added into this model uh, will look something like. Uh, this result plot. Let us wait for this plot uh, to come up. And that is the reason why uh, we are getting a sudden drop uh, in the end or where the state of charge is very, very low. And, and that is the reason why I was interested in simulating what happens to a battery management system under fully discharged condition. Right? So under fully discharged condition, the battery management system is going to give me uh, under voltage cutoff. Okay, and, uh, and and you are not very sure uh, when that is going to happen. Okay, so here if you see the voltage is almost constant uh, throughout uh, an hour of discharge, uh, but just in last few seconds, the voltage starts decreasing. And uh, you will get a same characteristics, right? What we are getting in the result, right? So here, uh, this is the characteristics, right? Which was, which was feed in. 
And uh, this is exactly the input to the model. And this is what we are exactly getting as a output to the model. And, and the reason is uh, actually the batteries behave like this. Right? And why do batteries behave like this? Because of their electrochemical um, reactions happening in the uh, inside of the battery. So I hope uh, this is uh, uh, clear to you, Tim. And uh, Sarah is asking, uh, you think the development of uh, vehicles be affected due to the silicon shortage we are facing today? Uh, yes, Sarah. So uh, it's not basically the silicon shortage, uh, I will say, uh, but there are a lot of uh, geopolitical factors affecting the international trade. So let's say China and Taiwan are uh, one of the countries where uh, they hold a lot of uh, um, uh, like larger volume of the overall semiconductor manufacturing. And then if they are going to uh, decide something on the uh, international business policy, right, uh, then there will be a shortage of chips in the supply, shortage of ICs in the market. And it is definitely not going to affect the electric vehicles. It's also going to affect your uh, price of uh, uh, laptop and uh, cell phone as well. So, what is the efficiency of charger? Uh, so Anujit uh, is asking what is the efficiency of charger? So it, it depends on what type of charger you have, uh, but it's basically an AC to DC power converter. And uh, if you take the average efficiency over the loading condition, right? so uh, that particular efficiency is going to be in the range of 85 to 95 percent. And uh, people are working on uh, uh, more efficient charger where the efficiency are as high as uh, 95 percent with uh, gallium nitride and silicon carbide type of devices. So the efficiency of the charger is really, really high. Uh, something in the range of 85 to 95 percent, uh, the top efficiency. The most, uh, the lowest efficiency of the charger uh, can be as low as um, 35 to 40 percent in, in during some loading condition. So, yeah, um, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, Thanks for attending this session. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see if we have any questions. Okay, Chinese manufactured battery packs are less expensive than others. Uh, are they cutting corners in this safety aspect? Um, so Mronali is asking uh, something like, uh, uh, why Chinese are low price? Right? Uh, so the answer is not very specific PV batteries. The answer is uh, with reference to all items. Right? Um, so basically, China is uh, looking at the business at, at a very large volume. And when you have a large volume of PV, uh, you can really, really bring down the cost. Right, uh, because if you multiply the cost with volume, uh, the overall turnover is going to be a huge uh, number. Right, and uh, are they compromising on the safety? Uh, not really, Ronali. So, uh, sorry, this is morally okay. So, morally, they are not actually uh, compromising on the safety aspect. It, it depends on what type of uh, Chinese supplier you are looking at, right, and uh, uh, and and. and even in China, uh, there are uh, 10 categories of product, right? So they, they sell class A category of product to US, Europe. And uh, if, if we are uh, the buyers who have a limited budget, uh, probably they can, uh, they have uh, class, uh, third class or fourth class product as well, uh, where there is a safety compromise. So, okay. How can we start the simulating design? So, Samyendra uh, Sunani is asking this. Um, so, if you want to learn simulating, uh, and if you are interested in uh, uh, doing a lot of such experiments, um, I recommend you to join the uh, skilling courses. Uh, that is, uh, there is one option. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, let's say, you need to develop a approach of uh, system level understanding and you need to develop an approach um, where you are going to uh, have something in your mind right uh, where uh, you know this can be the output right 
So, and, and if you want to validate your concept and your ideas, um, simulation is the first thing to do uh, in a software environment. Yeah, so Alvin is asking what is CC and CV of the battery. So CC and CV stands for constant current and constant voltage. And these are basically um, the charging characteristics. Okay, so let me go back to my presentation again and uh, let me explain you about that. Um, so if you have seen this, um, uh, let's say uh, the characteristics of a uh, battery, right? Um, where I'm sharing uh, Panasonic data sheet, right? So Panasonic 18650 uh, cell data sheet um, is there on the left side. And if you see uh, characteristics, right? So these are the charge characteristics. So how a cell is required to be charged according to its electrochemistry, uh, there are two region of operation. The green is a current value. So you can continuously charge this particular cell at um, this much of ampere, right? Uh, which is around 1.8 amperes, something like that. And uh, after you have reached to 80 percentage of uh, state of charge, uh, which is indicated as, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, another line, right? So this is uh, the capacity, which is the red one, right? So the red capacity is around 80 percentage. Uh, basically, you stop charging in constant current mode, and then you maintain the voltage to 4.2, right? So when you start providing this constant current, uh, it, its voltage is going to constantly rise. It can rise, 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 and it can reach to 4.2, and you are not very sure uh, when it is going to be 4.2. And, and therefore, you need to stop somewhere, and uh, let's say around 80% of the state of charge, and um, provide the battery uh, a constant voltage supply instead of constant current in order to uh, make sure that your battery is fully charged. So just imagine, Alvin, if you have a glass and uh, uh, if you are going to make it full, if I ask you to make it full, uh, you will initially start adding the water at a faster rate. And when you see that the glass is going to be full, almost full, uh, your rate of adding the water is going to reduce because you want to make sure that it is exactly full. It is not a, not a uh, single percent empty as well as there is no overflow. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, you definitely have to reduce your rate of uh, adding the water into a glass, right? And that's what is exactly happening here. So I, I hope I answered your question, Andy. Um, okay, so let me go. Oh, there are a lot of comments. I Let me check if I'm not um, missing uh, any important question. Okay, Siddharth is asking what is the meaning of uh, yellow line uh, meeting the blue line. Okay, so Siddharth, uh, I, I give you an example. So let's say I'm your friend and you have the steering uh, uh, and accelerator and brake in your uh, hands and legs. Uh, so like you are the driver and I'm uh, sitting next to you. And if I ask you to run the vehicle at uh, 10 kilometers per hour, right? You are going to shift the gear and uh, you will be applying the acceleration so that the 10 km per hour speed is maintained. Now I'm going to announce the next speed in the next second. Let's say I, I announce the next speed is uh, uh, 11 km per hour. I, and then I say 14 km per hour. Then I say 20 km per hour. Then you will keep on applying more and more accelerator. Right? And if I do that, how close you are following me, right? How close you are following my command uh, with the actual vehicle speed, right? So I, I take a record of whatever speed I'm announcing every second, and we take a record of what is the actual speed of the vehicle every second. And then we try to match uh, whether uh, these two speeds are same or not. So whether my set point and my actual uh, speed is same or not, uh, that is what uh, we were comparing. Okay, so uh, Amrita Balu is asking how to download MATLAB and C-Link. So yes, uh, just visit the MATLAB's website, 
create your login and uh, you can uh, uh, apply for a trial license uh, on the Matchworks website. So, okay, so Prem is asking, uh, yes, exactly. So, so we do not have a clue when the patrol is going to finish or the meter is working or not. Uh, yes, but uh, it is possible to use the last drop of petrol, right? Uh, but sometimes in an electric vehicle battery pack, uh, it's not possible to uh, use the all remaining energy, right? So even if your battery pack is not fully discharged, you have to just disconnect you now uh, because you are near to fully discharge, right? So that's the difference between an uh, EV and a uh, petrol vehicle. Um, Okay, I Amrita, yes, it is available for free. Uh, you, you can download a one month uh, trial. Um, okay, what is the scope of VLSI in EV? So, Ashish, um, if you are a VLSI domain person or if you are interested in VLSI, uh, there are a lot of electronic ICs used uh, either in uh, charger control or uh, uh, inverter control. There are a lot of other ICs used for communication and there are a lot of other. Uh, integrated uh, chip, which are used for uh, uh, battery management system, right? So there are, uh, uh, it's possible to have a, a kind of uh, um, good understanding of uh, uh, chip level design, which is uh, uh, VLSI design, considering the aspect of actual requirement. So when we are uh, looking at a BMS uh, IC, uh, we have a requirement of, uh, let's say, it should be high voltage. It should be able to have, a, let's say, 20 analog to digital converters on chip. Uh, it should have a SPI communication, I2C communication, right? And if I know all these requirements from EV point of view, I can do a better design for um, electronic IC. So, yeah, there is a, a great scope for uh, VLSI domain in EV as well. Okay, so thanks a lot, guys. Okay, share PDF. Oh, there are um, Sairam. Uh, I think you are a fan of uh, my presentation files. Um, obviously, this lectures will be available. Um, you can refer them uh, later. We never share our uh, uh, presentation material in PDF or PPD format. Thank you. So, um, Okay, so I think I covered most of the questions. So, uh, Gaurav is asking yesterday, I had a question, um, dynamo and attraction motor, will it be useful in downhill? Okay, yeah. So Gaurav, um, uh, what I was trying to explain you yesterday, uh, it's not possible to create energy from nowhere, right? Uh, but if you have spent a good amount of energy in going uh, in taking your vehicle up here, and while you are coming back, yes, you can definitely use this, use that energy um, to charge your battery, right? So a vehicle going down here uh, will have a good amount of energy which can be stored back to battery. So, okay, so thanks a lot, guys.